It's the Jim Fannin Show. We've come to take your mind. Am I still on? And uh, just come home for a quick hit before I hit the beach again. Mm, hello. I am your politically marginalized, ma- marginalized pimp in the box. Okay. Welcome aboard. It's the Jim Fanny Show. Usually here Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Live from Port Dalhousie. It's a presentation of absolutely no one. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thanks for joining me. The king of scrubs. I talk to politicians, media types, rock stars, and heathens. Thursday nights, 7 p.m. And any other time, I feel like it. We're live right now at Team Niagara on Twitter is how you follow me. At Jim Fannin on Twitter still has a Periscope account. I'm broadcasting live from that now. We're back on Facebook. We're live there. Your comments do get propagated throughout the other platforms. So if you comment somewhere, it goes everywhere. Or on the Jim Fannin Show on Twitch, the Jim Fannin Show on, uh, no, TrueTube on YouTube, T R E W Tube, T R E W. And then that's also at True.Tube, which is the paywall where I'll be when I'm banned from everything, which is soon. You can catch a bunch of my interviews. The best place to find the complete. My complete work is on the podcast platforms, iTunes, anything else, Stitcher, FM radio, whatever it is, I'm there. Uh, I'm going to hit exactly what is in the title. But first, PPC in me. I did apply to be the candidate for the PPC in St. Catharines. I was declined. The... um, I don't know why. I mean, I can, sur- I can, I can guess, and I'm guessing because, you know, the fake news that was generated about me by certain individuals, by an individual that has a boyfriend that is sympathetic to it. I think the fake news was maybe too much for them to handle. Even though Max told me privately that's not going to be a problem. There's also, I mean, it's a new party. They've had enough problems so far with their branding, and they probably don't need a guy like me that's a little bit of a, I don't know, a, a free speech absolutist that says anything and doesn't apologize. They don't need that kind of guy standing for them while they're trying to build a party and uh, gain some uh, credibility. So I get it. They also probably are thinking the last thing we need in a federal election is a local candidate upstaging the leader or trying to distract from the platform. So I'm disappointed. And the only reason I'm going public about this right now is in the spirit of controlling the message. A PPC, a candidate is going to be announced soon. Maybe, maybe this week. I don't know. If my intel is correct, and I have no reason to believe that it is, isn't, um, there's going to be a candidate announced soon. And so if I've confided in you privately that I've I've sought the nomination and you haven't heard that I was declined, I'm telling you now before you read it somewhere else. 
All right. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I still get a lot of time for Max. I will say that the communication within the party is horrible. And I've got a relationship with Max from the standpoint that I've interviewed him a few times. He's been very generous, and my contact at head office has been great with me. Uh, I expect to have Max on again. I still support him. I'm disappointed, but I'm, it's not like I'm going to go to war and try and drag the guy through the mud because I've got hurt feelings. Yeah, I'm disappointed, but they're still my... I'm still going to vote PPC, and if I'm asked, I will... Um, help out in the background very quietly because <laughs> nobody needs to know that I'm in, in, uh, involved in their campaign uh, what you see on the screen is a, a, a text message that I uh, was sent at some time I keep everything okay I'm a data whore I have been since well even before digital I mean, I've got cassette tapes. I've got hours of hi-fi music recorded on super VHS tapes. <laughs> like six hours or two hours. Like, I keep everything. I got my old albums. I got my old hockey cards. Uh, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a hoarder. I just keep things that are important to me. And well, I guess my text messages are always important to me, so I can go back at at them and look at them and. Remember <laughs> the fondness of some people before my politics changed, before I went moderate center right. This or my th these this is a text message from a friend. They took out a few times. Not romantically, at least not on my part. <sighs> Whatever. More is gonna come out about this. And then I might as well talk about Spanton. I found this today while I was looking for other stuff. Emily Spanton also used to be a friend of mine. And, um, well, she's got a lot to say about me now. Uh, this was from March. I might, I might have seen it, but I didn't pay much attention to it if I did. And then today it popped up, and I'm like, what's this? So a Emily Spanton, she L. Her tweets, for those listening on the podcast. And for the record... I drove his car home because he was too drunk to drive and I was sober. He had no issue giving me the keys. I want to be clear. He's an intention-seeking asshole. I posted earlier about how most men in Niagara sexualize me and, it f and felt it needed clarification. <sighs> I'm not going to talk about the sexualization of Emily Spanton. I could. But I will say, and I posted this as the um, preface to the tweet, the truth is, as a pastor on the street pulled over and asked her if she wanted a ride. She made me wait with my bladder about to burst outside of her dealer's house and at the corner of Lake and Scott Street, so it was overcome with unexpected, like I'd taken this dose before the reaction, nausea from a small amount of edibles taken hours earlier. I bailed at the intersection and asked her to drive. She obliged, telling me, uh, as we almost drove through my garage door while pulling in my driveway that she had no license and not to mention, and not to tell anyone. It was during the municipal election. Hell, forget the license. She had no idea how to drive. We barely made it to my place without crashing. Then she went to the bathroom every 10 minutes and chewed her cud like a cow on meth. Thinking, <laughs> thinking I had never seen a drug addict before or could tell what she was up to. She stayed until I felt better then walked home. And now... Let me tell you about the Ice Dogs game. Nah, I'm not even going to do that. The Ice Dogs, I have a, I have a stand-up bit based on this bitch. <laughs> and it's nasty. And if you're close to me, you may have heard it before, but I'm not telling it here. But for the record, she drove my car because I was too drunk. Um... Emily Spanton is now in France. I do believe Paris. Yes, Paris, France. Oh, fucking forget about Niagara and stay there. <coughs> so that's a uh, house cleaning. That's all I got. I don't care. The rest of my show, as usual, is normally about race issues. Not because I'm concerned about them because you won't shut up about them. And I'm talking about the government and the mainstream media that won't let us, 
that continues to tell us that we suffer from some systemic racism in this country. It's not true. We do not have a systemic racist problem here. I'm not saying racism doesn't exist. It's just not throughout all life and all of our institutions and all of our infrastructure. No, it's not. Yes, people get treated badly because of race. It's horrible. I would stand beside you any time to fight you in that war. Nobody likes to see bullies get... You know, well, people like to see bullies get what they have earned, but nobody likes to see people get bullied. Nobody likes to see people treated unfairly based on their race. White supremacy doesn't exist other than like 40 people around North America. Like the kid, come on, man. He th- When's the last time you heard someone say, I'm better than you because I'm white? It just doesn't happen. This girl is my new hero, and she's speaking before a um, school board meeting, and let's just give it up for her. And she came to your school when she procures bids for ISU with construction and came to your school and spoke to your staff for two straight days. Why did she do that? This is why she did that. This is why she did that. To make sure that when our students want to know whether or not they have a vagina or a penis, they have pictures from your staff to be able to help them. They don't have enough sex. They don't have enough anal sex. They need adults to tell them how to masturbate. And what I call that is... So here's what I'm asking you. You have a hard time hearing this from me, but this is for for 10 years old and up, and this bill was passed for five-year-olds. And you have a hard time me sitting here telling you the words anal sex, masturbation. That's hard for you or the time's up because the time's not really up. I don't believe you, Mr. Wiley, that my time is up. But I'm going to end with this. I'll, I'll close with this because this was too much for you. I can tell right now. And that's why you're cutting me off. But last time I said, you know what? Critical race theory. Little girl in the back was laughing every single time Megan said something because white people oppress black people, right? Is it your principal black? Is it your mayor black? Now, I would like to introduce to you Ty Smith. And she came to your school. Uh, you get it? Stop sexualizing our children. Please, I'm begging you. Who's standing for the kids? Stop bringing drag queen story time to grade three. That's bull. I don't think my cries are being heard. The leftist madness continues to run rampant. And here's another presentation. A speech. Uh, well, you can, if you can see it. Loud. Loudon. Loud. Loudon County School Board meeting was absolute fire. All day, every day. Must see TV. I'll just leave you to it. This one's uh, a minute long. Fairfax County public school teacher, and I'm going to give a message of encouragement to parents and teachers and students who are too afraid to come and speak forward. Parents, the longer that you wait and you don't hold your child's schools accountable gives these guys more time to dictate what's best for your child's physical, mental, and emotional health. Don't be afraid to speak out for your kids because they are voiceless and they, and they rely on you. You should be afraid of them rooting for socialism by the time they get to middle school. Teachers, it may seem that our careers have come to a dead end, but I'm here to remind you, we don't work for the school board. We work to mold the next generation of well-rounded American patriots. So don't give up because it is up to us. Students, you are on the front lines of these indoctrination camps. Challenge the staff when you are presented with a ludicrous statement and do not allow anybody to tell you that you cannot accomplish anything because of your skin color or to hate yourself because of your skin color. Students, it is up to you to be the next generation of victims or victors. And finally, to the board, this isn't over and your policies are just as... Nick Gothard, followed by Ryan. Talking. Talk about cutting the mic. These two women are my heroes, and I should say many women are my heroes, especially in this fight against vaccines, mandatory vaccines, mandatory masking of children. It seems the women uh, have risen to the battle lines and risen to, v- to hear their voices, have stood up and been visible in protecting the children. And God bless this woman. Not so much this woman. I think she's going to tell us all about 
how we're racist. Oh my goodness. I can't. I just can't. What is systemic racism in America? Well, we're going to find out. You might think racism in the U.S. is really a case of a few bad apples. A racist cop here, a so-called Karen there, a leader of a white supremacist group. You know, people who deliberately hate. But we can't blame racism in America on just a few bad apples. Think of our nation's problem as more like an apple pie with the racial injustice baked right into every aspect of our society. <laughs> Meet Ebony and Emily, two American babies, one black, one white, born at the same time, same place, but Ebony will not get an equal slice of the pie. And that starts from birth. Because of her race, Ebony is... Why not Ebony and Ivory? If we're gonna, <laughs> come on, Eben, Ebony and Emily, <laughs> come on three times more likely than Emily to die in the hospital as a newborn if her doctor is white. And once Ebony and Emily go to school, while both girls occasionally misbehave, studies show they won't face the same punishment. Ebony is seven times more likely than Emily to be suspended and four times more likely to be arrested on campus. When the two girls grow up and apply for jobs, Odds are, fewer employers will call Ebony back because she has a black sounding name. And even though Emily and Ebony will get the same college degree, once oh, Ebony is hired, I can't take hired, much. This is five minutes long. I can't put you through this. This is absolute bull. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. This is the day and age we live in when we're teaching our children that because of the color of their skin, they're inherently racist. And that came from Laura Yip's mouth herself at a regional council meeting. She stood up and said, by virtue of being white and playing under the system of white people, you are already, even if you're anti-racist, you're racist by your adjunct, <laughs> your adjacentness to the system that is white supremacy. What? This is a girl that says she's taking the high road. This is a girl that wants to portray herself as a unifier, fighting for the little guy. Wrong. Yoga teacher Jessamine Stanley believes that white supremacy has polluted yoga and it's time to talk about it. What? <laughs> what? Um, listen, Jessamine Stanley, yoga is not white supremacy polluted, okay? Get a job. Stop blaming your life. Hey, People Magazine, great article. Proud of you. Well done. Jeez. I wouldn't have to talk about this if it wasn't Joe Biden's M.O. And the mainstream media and government alike, like Justin Trudeau and Doug Ford, telling us we've got a problem with systemic racism. No, we don't. We have a problem with corruption in politics. That's what we have. White lies. This is from The Sun UK. Sorry, I'm not showing you the links. Uh, you, I'll put them in the, in the YouTube comments after. Psychiatrist says white people are psychopathic liars after saying she fantasized about <clears throat> them in a yell speech i say <clears throat> them because because youtube you can't even cover news that says <clears throat> them without getting shut down look at this woman um why do you hate your life well, I can tell you, if it's similar to people like Laura Yip, it's because they hate being a woman. Laura Yip said in an interview with me at the very end, if you could come back a man, would you? She said yes. 
imagine growing up yearning for a penis like for yourself like on yourself imagine growing up and maturing as an adult hating your sex or wanting to be another sex i can't can't imagine it's frightening and this woman who lives in the most tolerant society ever created in North America thinks that white people are psychopathic liars. Wow. I can't, I, I pray that these people's lives come together so that they're happy, so they stop attacking innocent groups. Mara Gay. Mara Gay was the one that had a problem figuring out that 350 million dollars does not divide equally into the population a million times in other words she said that the 350 million dollar budget so-and-so uh was talking about that if they just gave that to every person in america they'd all be millionaires Mm, the math is kind of wrong they backtracked on it i'm not saying you know you're not entitled to have a little slip but this girl came out to say that it's disturbing to see dozens of American flags on trucks on Long Island. Oh my gosh. This is the NBC, uh, the MSNBCs of the world. This is the New York Times. This is Mara Gay. <laughs> Shut up. Author tries to cancel apple pie by linking it to, quote, genocide of indigenous people. What? Okay. <laughs> I don't even want to get into the argument of indigenous people. The, the indigenous people were warring amongst themselves before white man came. They practiced genocide and taking over lands and killing each other. Yes, they did. Look at the history. Before a white man showed up here, it was all not peace and love, okay? <sighs> Apple pie is canceled. My goodness gracious. Layton, what up? Primo, what up? Thanks for joining. Um, this is shocking. I don't know how else to put it. Also, kind of stupid. <laughs> see a transformer blow up that's basically what it looks like <laughs> slides into the telephone pole smashes and explodes that is a big boom boom <laughs> look at these people they're hanging out of the vehicle <sighs> cancel the cops we don't need them Godzilla showed up at the end. The, like, Twitter and YouTube comments are absolutely genius. I love them. Anthony No. I like Anthony No. Um, a little disappointed he put himself in the line of fire and got himself beat up again. I can't play this whole thing because of YouTube, but here's a taste of some of the threats he gets on his voicemail. You're a fucking little bitch. Do you fucking hear that? You're a fucking little bitch, you piece of shit. You're a fucking little bitch boy. You probably were fucking popular in high school. That's why you're out here fucking around, you fucking dipshit. Do you notice a little bit of uh, projection? These are the narcs. These are the narcissistic personality disorder types of the world. The entitled pieces of garbage that think the government should take care of Everything, every tear that is shed is on the backs of the government to fix your pathetic life. Guess what? No one fucks with you. You're fucking stupid. Hello, Andy. No, I will fucking. Now, I can't. I think he says I, I can't play it because it's a threat and uh, YouTube. So this is Andy No's tweet. 
I encourage you to go over and support him on Twitter. He's a good man. He's a good journalist. And he is. <laughs> he's getting it. I don't need to talk about the 12 people that were canceled for using the N-word like Hunter Biden. That doesn't include some of my favorites. And I don't know most of these people. So skip that. I don't know why I thought it was important. Or this. Why do I think this is important? Summary of federal tax income tax data, tax year 2018. You see the top 1% and the top 5%. The average tax rate and the average income tax paid. It gets better. Oh. Where's, oh, maybe I missed it. Oh, okay, here it is. For your information, the top 1% of tax filers earns 21% of the income in the U.S. and pays 40% of federal income taxes. They pay an average rate of 25.4%. For all Americans, the average rate is 13.3%. The bottom 50% of earners pay the average rate of just 3.4%. Are you getting it? Tax the rich. I can't think the rich are already paying their fair share, no? Median household incomes. I touched on this in another program. Um, asked a legitimately racist question, maybe. <laughs> First of all, Asians, median household income approaching 100,000. They're at 98,174. Well done, Asians. I hate to make this all about race, but since you do, here I am. Caucasians, white, not Hispanic. Now, <laughs> where do we put the Jews? The Jews are white, right? Are the Jews here in the $76,000 a year that we average? I, I, if the Jews were included in the white numbers, wouldn't we be over here? <laughs> I don't know. I guess not. Statista? I don't know. Is this a reliable site? Hispanics? Median household income? 56,113. Half of the Asians. Blacks? 45,438 bucks. They're the lowest. Race facts. Hate facts. I'll get shut down. It's 201 EST. I don't think we need to hit this much anymore. This is a time when Laura Yip and I were friendly. I was the first one to support Laura Yip, okay? There was a uh, retired politician. She was the third runner-up. I argued to plug her in as a host at 610 CKEDB. I interviewed her. I supported her. I worked with her behind the scenes to make sure she had the votes. She took the seat. I continued to interview her. I continued to support her. I continued to actually take her out here and there, meet with her for coffee, go to events together. Not many. She went to church with me, sat in the front row as an atheist. I don't know. Maybe I did, I did not meet your expectations as a friend, but as soon as I went moderately center right, I lost people like this. Just some... You know, affectionate, friendly tweets. These are actually Facebook posts. Public conversations. Lori Yip says to me when I said, nice job, no BS, and always a frank discussion. You're never afraid to voice your opinion, which can be risky in this town sometimes. So I give you credit for that. She comes back. It comes down to this. When people vote for me, I want it to be for who I am rather than because I pretended to be someone else. Laura, you did not pretend to be a radical lefty when you got elected. I'm sorry, you've slid further left, and I hope it damages your chances at re-election. I really do, because I don't want you elected anymore. Fuck that. Anyway, more, t more from Ms. Yip, who apparently is not my biggest fan anymore. Michael Hauser created an account to expose Jim Fannin as Grantham Citizen. I am not Grantham Citizen, 
And here's Michael Hauser saying, when I'm wrong, I say I'm, I was wrong. Now, this is a name on account, right? We don't know who Michael Hauser is or care what he thinks, but I guess he can cancel his account now because I don't do anything anonymously, ever. I did have Justin Trudeau's beard at one time. That was as close to an a account as I've ever had, but I never, never trashed anyone on that account because my trashing will have my name attached to it firmly. Grantham Citizen is back, by the way. I got a copyright strike for talking to uh, De Dennis Costantini of Evolution Spa. We spoke to him and his wife from uh, Belarus. He's left the country, sold his business and his house, and YouTube gave me a strike and a two-week suspension for talking to him. Medical misinformation. This is a shot I took from when I was down hanging with the queens, I think. I don't know where we're going here. We don't need this. Feminism. Feminists are gross. Julie S. Lalonde tweets and Emily Spanton retweets. I need you all to know how hard I LOL'd at this. This is a, a picture of Jesus Christ on the cross. Clickhole at Clickhole on Twitter. Put it out. Share if you've also been crucified, but you didn't feel the need to make a whole big thing out of it. This is a direct shot at Christians and anyone that believes in the Christian faith. I'm not too worried about you talking trash about the Son of Man. The tweet is called, It's not a big deal being hung on the cross. Let's see how you like it, Julie S. Lalonde, you fascist pig. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's all I really want to get into. I will say, uh, and on a beach update... I went yesterday with my coffee, two days ago with my coffee. Zach, the friendly uh, guard, came up to him. Well, not so friendly. What's he doing? Imposing tyrannical edicts, dictums. I don't know. I'm not good with English. <laughs> yeah, he came over and said I'd been trespassed. I said, no, I, no, I haven't. I heard I was going to get trespassed, but I have no notice, verbal or written. He called the cops. I needed the bathroom, and the bathrooms were locked at 10 o'clock, and coffee goes right through me in the morning. And when I went to the bathroom, it was locked at 10 o'clock. It was supposed to be open at 9. I asked him and his partner, what's up with the bathroom? They go, that's not our job. You know what else is not your job? Parking enforcement. You know what else is not your job? Telling people to turn their music down on the beach or kicking them out because they won't listen to you. So I left before the NRP showed up. But two nights ago, that same night, I got a call from the NRP at quarter to 12, quarter to midnight. And it was an NRP constable. And he said that a security guard from a certain firm was calling to complain that I was contacting him on a cell phone. Listen, Matthew Trombley or whoever else is complaining. I don't know who you are. I don't. Well, I guess I could find out where you live, but I don't care. Nor do I care to speak to you ever. And I don't do crank calls. I'm not an anon troll. So stop calling the police on me because you feel like I'm harassing your phone. And a message to any of my supporters out there who might know this dreg, this local rent-a-cop, I got no problem with the guy other than he's been an asshole to me. Don't, if you know this man, don't approach, don't harass, don't call. Because if you do, it only makes it look like me. So please, I'm telling you, don't. Vigilante justice is not something I support. I don't support harassment. I'm dealing with this. Well, if I deal with it properly, he'll have assault charges, not because I'm a beta cuck, but because I don't think the head of security for the firm that's running the rules at the beach should be allowed to push people around. Listen, I'm 6'4", 235. I can handle myself. 
and I'm not going to engage in a violent confrontation with a security guard while holding my my recording cell phone in my right hand. Okay? I, if I'm going to throw, I'm going to be free with both hands. And it probably won't last long. So I said to the cop, listen, dude, that's not me. I don't roll that way. Anything, if I got something to say, I'll broadcast it. I don't need to call some stranger and tell him whatever you guys are telling. If, if it's you, I'm just telling you, back the hell off. It's not how we roll. I don't support it. If you know the guy, leave him alone. Let me deal with it. I don't need any more hassles. <sighs> Mama mia. Go see my TikTok. At Jim Fan and Show on TikTok. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to get to 1,000 followers. In the last week to 10 days, I've gone from zero to 424. So I'm almost halfway there. Uh, mostly political clips. You know, you can see that dude, rent a cop is here. I can't believe that this thing didn't take off more. 288 views. It's wild. My coverage of the vandalized, quote unquote, vandalized, uh, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it? The cross, the pride crosswalk is at 5,000. Should be more. Uh, you can see that there. Uh, what happened to Canada? This is Tucker Carlson carving on Justin Trudeau and his policies. And then down here is my su most successful uh, uh, TikTok yet. Oh, no, that's not. That's at 84K. Kamala's at 88 almost. That's when she just denies going to the border. But this is the one that continues to get traffic right here, this one, for whatever reason. That's all my comments are based on right now is this supposed defacing and vandalism. There's a guy in Miami, I think, that did a burnout across the flag, and he was charged with a felony. A felony for doing a burnout on a political statement being used as a crosswalk. A political statement, yes, definitely. So go find me on TikTok. Find me on Twitter here at Team Niagara, at Jim Fannin's gone, at Jim Fannin Show is gone. Thanks to Rob Gill and his lefty wacko. Jeez, really? You can find the hate speech and anything if you have 100,000 people, well, 30,000 people complaining and reporting your profile. Find me here on Instagram. I have two accounts on Insta. One's at Jim Fannin, one's at Jim Fannin Show. Pick one, deal with it. Here it is on Rumble. I don't use Rumble all that much. I've been using it a little bit more because a couple of my channels are on two strikes. This is true.tube. And if it's working properly, you'll see that I'm broadcasting live on true.tube right now. This eventually will be the paywall site. You will not be able to see my messages or my videos unless you join. Coming soon. ACAST is where I got that. Oh, I'm filing a Freedom of Information request form for the body cam of all the, uh, uh, the body cam of the security and the cell phone data of everyone that was there, including the city staffer. I'll have that just over. 30 days go see my boy Gavin McInnes no I don't get paid for pimping him he's just funny and he's politically <sighs> engaged he runs a decent commentary and atheism is unstoppable is is a good fit as well all right uh, that's it for now I think I need to get the rest of my day rolling here now that it's 212 EST we're gonna go out with one of my favorites this is Matt McPherson's project. It's called M Factor. And this tune's called Want Some. Peace. Love. Hug your neighbor. And whatever you do, for crying out loud, rip that dirty diaper off your beautiful face. Show the children your smile. <laughs> We're starved for it. I'm out.
Good night now. Oh.